it's freezing cold. <laughs> 57. I know a lot of you are going to laugh back east because you're probably sitting in snow. I don't know what somebody's putting in down the street here, but that just made um, the fourth cement truck that went by. Four loads. Wow. Um, okay, I've got two things in this video. I said the last one that I did full maintenance on both machines. But I missed something, which I just happened to catch yesterday. The upgrade for the constant force pistons, the cable was starting to fray. So I'll take you over to the bench since I had to take it out and show you guys what it looks like and stuff. But in that video, I, I remember the very first video when I talked about the upgrade, I said I had bought two pistons that were were not enough for so I went and bought higher pressure pistons turns out after I took it apart it's the other way around I had bought too high a pressure and went and bought lower pressures and in the bench I said I went back to the higher pressure which is wrong um, I've got two 20 psi constant force pistons in there right now the higher pressure one keeps the head up so when you start to use the fine tune knob the head isn't taking up all the play in the worm gear so when you start to mill I noticed that it came down so I've got the lower pressure ones in there so I'm always down and it's a little bit harder to raise it but I've been working with it for a long time the second part of the video is I, a long time ago I did a video on where you're supposed to set the tool height on the mini lathe and I did it by facing. You just go across and tell, oh there's a bee just came in, great. Uh, you just face it, I'm going to keep my eye on this bee, oh he left, yeah, stay out. <laughs> face it until you don't have a bump. but. Um, I always, and I had set all my tools on the granite surface with an indicator. Oh, he's back in here. All right, hang on. Okay, problem gone. Let's see if another one shows up. Where was I? Uh, I was talking about facing and setting the tool height, and I use it on the granite block and set all my tools to it. But I always notice that when I'm doing a facing, aluminum, anything, when you hit the very center, there's always a little, oh, something more force and then it goes once you pass the center. So I started thinking, how do you figure out where real center is? Statistically or something like that. So it hit me, I came up with a method here and I'll show you guys the method and it's real simple so that you can figure out where absolute rotational center is and then it's real easy to set your tool to it. So that's the second part of this video. Enjoy. Really shocked at this. Look at <laughs> this is a stainless steel cable. How oh, this thing frayed that in an aluminum hole. <laughs> so and pulled the bearing out. This is the brass pin that I had made that just goes in there. And I can actually feel it. It is slightly worn, even though it, there's the two bearings right there. So I'm going to have to grease all this stuff up and put it back together, but at least you guys can see what it looks like. Why is there is that a groove in here? No, it's just the way it looks. So, All right, so there's some maintenance here. I got a new piece of cable here to go in there. Pull that pin out too. It's just pushed in there is all. Can I even cut this? Wait, how do you cut it? Jeez. There. To get it out. What does that hole look like? I'm curious to see if that wore. So I'm going to have to grease. I didn't wear it all. Because huh. I can see the chamfer on it. And it's not oval or anything. And I remember in the design too. Yeah, look at that. Perfect hole. In the design, everything was like in a straight line. Oh, and since you guys haven't seen, these are the two pistons that were in here. And they just screw in. 
here, lock tight them down. And then the other end, the two of them, is just a plate that goes on there with the nut. And the cable goes in this kind of guy here. Just clamps down on the cable and holds it there. So that's what the inside looks like. And checking these pistons out too, I remember the first time I was I remember saying in the first video when I talked about this mill upgrade that I had bought two pistons that were too weak and then I bought the next ones up. But I'm looking at this and I'll update the website sheet. This says, one of them did, I think it says, yeah right, PI, 20 pounds. And I'm pushed, I, to take this apart I could easily compress these, so they're worn out. And so I was playing with the old ones that were too weak and these are actually stronger right now to me feeling compressing one at a time than the other ones. So I'm going to put the other ones in and it should hopefully work out. But So that's just kind of a little heads up if you guys do this upgrade. And I'm lucky that I caught this in time. If that would have snapped while I was mailing something, I would have been really angry. All right, sorry about the lighting. Oh, I'm probably going to affect it when I get in the way here. Yeah, you can see my shadow, but to find absolute tool height, this is how I did it. Remember in the one video, I said you've got it to do the tail stock. you got to line it up not to the chuck, but to the absolute rotational center. So I just put a piece of half inch. Oh, yeah, this was the guy. Put a piece of half inch in the collet turned it, this is the surface here, I turned it so I know the outer surface is with perfect respect to absolute rotational center. Hit it with the finest um, scotch brite that I had to make sure it had a nice smooth surface. Mounted the dial indicator like you see here on this surface. Turned it on so I made sure there was absolutely no movement to the dial indicator. Lift it up, put it down a bunch of times to make sure I get the exact same reading. That way I know I've got my arm all nice and tight, the magnet is perfect, nothing is moving. Then I could lift this up and carefully get the part out of the collet chuck, I could then micrometer, not caliper, because remember, calipers are only good to about a thousand. I use my high precision micrometer to check the diameter of this guy, divide it in half, oh yeah, write down what the reading is while it's on the top of this, micrometer it, cut it in half, subtract that number from this reading. Now the new number is absolute dead center for rotation on the uh, spindle. Now I can take the saddle and these guys, move my tool in there until I'm right on top of the tool and I should be reading um, 0.135 so I am five and a half thousandths too high on this tool. Now I have seen people make a calibrated block of round rod or whatever. I could machine a piece so that I get the perfect reading here when that block is underneath there. I gotta make sure there's no oil on the bed because you can easily get a half to a thousand um, inaccurate measurement. So once I had the height set, and I probably will make one of those guys that will go under there, now I can always just put the dial indicator back and put it on top of that block and get a reading and now I can start coming in with all my different tools and make sure they're at the correct height. So uh, this tool actually I've been using a long time and it's been doing a great job surfacing, facing off stuff. But it is, uh, like I said, it's five, five and a half thousandths or so too high. So I could pull this off right now, unscrew this and then just machine the surface down to take it down a little bit more and then I can keep checking it until I've got it right. So that's uh, just one technique that I just now came up with for finding the absolute rotational center so I can check my tool heights. Just thought I'd share that with you guys.